Well, good morning, everybody. I am back. Yes, morning, not evening, morning. So now we are going to focus in on Matthew, Mark, and Luke a little bit, okay? And of course, these are the Synoptic Gospels. Remember what that meant? I hope you do. Remember, it's a same point of view, all three of them, but they wrote to different audiences, so there were some some differences there too and we will start with Matthew and of course we know that he was written to the Jews right ah you caught me didn't you yeah that's right before we actually start into this we need to ask God for our wisdom so let's do that shall we Lord, we want to thank you for this morning thank you for uh, having us come together and we just ask for wisdom and guidance as we learn more about your word and diving into it and really opening up our minds and hearts to this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so now, Matthew. Okay, so we knew that he was written to the Jews, right? And he was his disciple. He was with them the whole time and it was the first book of the New Testament. We know that he was a tax collector because we talked about that before and that he left to follow the Lord. And it was written between 60 and 69 AD and of course for Jewish readers. Okay, that's why he his presentation was Jesus as the King of the Jews and the Jewish Messiah. And that's why he begins with uh, genealogy. And he is that bridge between the Old Testament and New Testament. That's what his gospel is for. Okay. Um, he had prophecies. You know, he told about the prophecies of the coming Messiah and Jesus. Sorry, I was just trying to get my mind right there. <laughs> um, and showed Jesus how, how Jesus had filled those Old Testament scriptures. Okay. And this is what we want to really realize is that Matthew also told about the kingdom of heaven in parables. But Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven. And kingdom of God is the same thing, but he's writing to the Jews. The God is holy. They did not. And if he would have said kingdom of God, they would have thought he was using his name in vain. So he changed God to heaven. So, you know, to appease the Jewish audience at the time, so that way they would understand that, and they would have understood that heaven meant God. So, without saying it. And so now we're just kind of go over a little bit of the outline of Matthew a bit, so that we kind of understand his uh, gospel. Um, first, he talks about his birth in early years, then his family tree, his birth, his escape to Egypt, um, his background for the ministry, and the announcement by John that he is the Messiah, his baptism and temptation, and then his ministry around Galilee, his early ministry started with that. Um, the Sermon on the Mount came next. And then the miracles of the Messiah and the commission of the 12 apostles. And then he talks more about ministry throughout Galilee. Then he does parables of the kingdom. Okay. And the opposition starts rising against Jesus at that point. And Jesus starts teaching on the life of the kingdom. And then he, then he talks about uh, his ministry in Judea and Perea. And if you remember that map that was put in, um, and you could go back to that to kind of get an idea or go online and find that map. And it kind of gives you an idea of where he went. Remember Galilee is up here and then Judea. You know, he had Samaria in the middle and Perea on the side there and then down below was 
Judea. Okay, so. And the teaching about divorce uh, and the kids and entering the kingdom of heaven. Okay. And then he taught about the teaching in the vineyard, the Lord's death, and about being a servant of God. And then a healing of a blind man, his final week of ministry in Jerusalem, which is called the Passion Week. Okay. Uh, then he talks about, then the next outline is his end time sermon on the Mount of Olives, then his arrest, trials, and crucifixion, and his burial, then the resurrection, and then the Great Commission. So this was kind of outline of how Matthew went down. Next is what is called, I know they're sticking together, sorry about that, is, well, we'll talk about the five sermons or teaching segments in Matthew, okay? And this is a very important part of understanding Matthew too, is that Matthew uses the first sermon in chapters five and seven as a transition from Jesus's private life to his public ministry. So this is kind of transition there. And the second sermon in Matthew, which is Matthew 10, does the 10 miracles and the rising conflict between Jesus and those Jewish leaders. Okay, so it's starting to come into play there. And this third teaching segment, which is chapter 13, has eight parables in it. Um, Jesus ministering in, Gar in Galilee and between Jesus and Jewish leaders, the Pharisees are really starting to build up at that point. Now, the fourth segment in Matthew 18, that Jesus turned from Galilee and starts to Judea for his final leg in his ministry. And this last teaching segment, Matthew 24 and 25, comes just before the Last Supper. And that's a crucifixion and resurrection and all of that. So that's kind of an outline of things of Matthew itself. Okay. Now, as we go on through Matthew, and we're going to talk about a little bit about the kingdom itself. Okay. Now, the Jews linked the Messiah to the kingdom of God. Okay, so they thought that when the Messiah came, that he was going to conquer the Romans, just like King David did, you know, and just set up this earthly kingdom. Well, that's not, as we know, that's not what Jesus was there for. He was set in the kingdom, first in our hearts, and then in our and then there will be a kingdom to come later, okay? Now, Matthew emphasized the righteous standard of the kingdom, the power over sin, um, power over sickness, demons, and death. And then he talks about the future kingdom to come, so he divides that up. Um, he also included 12 parables on the kingdom. Okay, the kingdom of heaven is like, is what Jesus said, you know, and then others said kingdom of God, but remember, it's all one and the same. Okay, and it kind of told us like, now I'm not going to go, uh, I encourage you to look up these parables because it's really good, but we're going to just discuss them just for a minute here because they all relate, all these parables relate to the kingdom itself. Okay, the weeds the mustard seed, the yeast, the hidden treasure, the pearl, the net, the workers in the vineyard, the two sons, the wicked renters, the wedding banquet, ten virgins, and the talents all relate to the kingdom of God. Okay, what I am going to focus on on this last one is the talents because this is the most abused parable 
in the New Testament. False teachers, uh, these prosperity gospel use this one all the time, and it has nothing to do with that. The talents are, you can assimilate that to your gifts God has given you. He gives some much, he gives some little. And you don't put those talents aside, you use them for the kingdom. This is that talent, is what Jesus was talking about here. Not money itself, because all of these parables I just went through talks about the kingdom of God is like a man who had this much, a man who had this much, and a man who had this much. This one spent it and doubled it. This one spent it, and and then he was rewarded. Then this one spent some, and he made a little bit. And his was, and what they made was actually more disciples. They made more people to come to Christ. This one made a lot. This one made a little because he had a lot of gifts. This one had some gifts and was done this one. But that third one, he didn't use it at all. Okay, that's what that means is that he did not use that one at all. He just kind of buried it. Okay. And then he was thrown in the lake of fire because he didn't use any of God gifts. He didn't believe in God. So that's what Jesus is talking about here. Okay. Not money. Okay. So never let that one be abused and used for a money teaching sermon because it's not, not in the least bit. Okay. But I do encourage you to read those parables because they're really good about teaching what the kingdom of God is like. You know, how we're supposed to live all the way down to waiting for Jesus' return, using the gifts God's given you. Um, you know, and having uh, other people come to be saved. So, well, I see my time is up on this one. Now, my next video, we'll just go ahead and do Mark and give an outline of Mark and an outline of Luke. So that way we know we can have a good idea of these three before we move on okay, to John and Acts. So for this New Testament to give a good view of how things are. So I hope we got a really good view of how Matthew, how he set up his gospel for that Jewish audience so they get a really good picture. And like I told you before, if you put all of these together, you get about the best story of Jesus you can get. Of course, you're not going to get it all. I mean, there's no books on earth that really explain everything he did. Okay, but they focused on what he did to the audience that he was, whether he was this or that, you know, they put, they put that perspective of that to the people that were going to be reading it. So it's pretty cool the way God set that up. Because remember, they were to go out and make disciples of the whole earth. Well, they needed to preach to the whole earth in a way that these people could understand it. Okay. So each writer, including Paul, with the epistles and John and Revelation and all of them, wrote to a specific audience so that way they could understand what they were reading. Okay, without offense, without, you know, and being polite and kind and without perverting the truth of Jesus, not in one iota. So as you can see, there's nothing, nothing, nothing that is wrong with this at all, okay? Because that's why they start in Matthew. Remember I told you that bridge? Well, the Old Testament and the prophecies and everything that was in it toward the end there just kind of bridges over to that New Testament. That's why we went over that intertestamental period to give you an outline of how things went. Now, it just wasn't completely blank that God was using events to get Messiah in. So, I mean, that's why 
when they put together all of these letters in what we call the Bible, is that Matthew is that bridge. Matthew's that bridge that connects the Old Testament and New Testament. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I thought so. Anyway, my time is up. We will end in a prayer, and then I will let you guys get out of here. Uh, Lord, we just want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for bringing us together to learning more about Matthew, and especially this connection that is between you and the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and the New Covenant, and how it does connect together, and how we are learn that there is no contradictions, no nothing in this whole gospel that is put together in this particular way for this particular reason. And it's amazing to understand it and get to know it better in a deeper way. Yeah, we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, folks. So I'm out of here. I will see you next time as we go into Mark and Luke. Okay.